Hi everyone, good morning, and thank you for joining us today. This week, the elementary students had the honor to hear from Seth Abel. He is the pastor of discipleship at the Shoreline Church in San Clemente, California. His message today is named Trusting God More in 2024. Thank you for listening. I hope you all enjoy. who God is. This is his character. He's a God who can make a way, right? And, and so I'm so happy to be here. I couldn't be more excited. I want to begin with, um, I want to begin with a German New Year's wish, okay? Any German speakers among us? I'm really hoping not. Okay, you speak German. <laughs> Shoot, okay. Well, we'll see if this makes sense. But my, my grandparents, uh, came over from Germany so many, so many years ago, I would say, how many years, but then you guys would know I'm super old. But anyway, we would always grow up, and growing up, we would give them this German New Year's wish, so I'm just going to give it to you guys, because it's kind of fun. Okay. It says, Ich wünsche glückselig neige Gesundheit, Freundlichkeit, langes Leben und Ewigseligkeit. And right now she's like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> she only meant a few sentences. Well, that's good because even for people who speak fluent German, they're always like, yeah, it kind of makes sense. So I think my grandparents had like a low dialect or something. Anyway, it's so good to be with you guys. My name is Seth. I know many of you. I love getting the opportunity to share with you at chapel each and every year. Hello, you. And um, okay, what is the year? What, what year is it? 2024, which is absolutely crazy, specifically for the teachers, and if we have any parents in the room, I know for you guys, you're like, yeah, it's 2024, last year was 2023, the year before that was 2022, what's the big deal? But guess what? When some of us were growing up, we thought 2024 was a year that was like so far in the future that we would all be wearing like jetpacks by this time, right? We'd be in silver jumpsuits, flying around in jetpacks. But that's not the case. We got these boring shoes, and here we are. I guess we can always hope, right, that 2055 or something like that, we're going to be flying around in the air, and it's going to be pretty cool. But I love New Year's, and I love New Year's because it means that everything is made new. It's a blank slate, right? As you think about the coming year that's before us, we have almost 12 months to go. We, we've just begun this year, and um, what, what God's Word says is that His mercies are new every morning. It says in the Old Testament in Lamentations chapter 3 that God's mercies are brand new every time we wake up in the morning. And I figured if that's true, if God's mercies are brand new each and every day, isn't it even more true that at the beginning of a new year, He says, listen, my son, my daughter, he calls you by name, and he says, my mercy, my grace, it's all fresh for you this year. Isn't that encouraging? And actually, in the Hebrew uh, context, that word for new means distinct. And so it means that God has distinct mercies for 2024 that are completely new because you're going to live a different year than you lived in 2023. 2023 uh, answer this question. Was it just perfectly wonderful? Everything went your way every single day of the year? Of course not, right? Of course not. Did you have ups and downs in 2023? Do you think that you're going to have ups and downs in 2024? Well, I guarantee you we will. Look at what Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So this is amazing, you guys. You're not going to live a life free from pain or difficulty in the coming year, but what Jesus says to you and what Jesus says to me is that I am greater. I am, I am greater. There, there is no problem that you're going to walk through. There's no difficulty you're going to face that Jesus isn't already prepared for. And because you are in him, because his Holy Spirit lives inside you, he says, I want to bless you with the perseverance and the strength to get through whatever 
you have to go through. Isn't that encouraging? And so no matter what we face, we can rely upon the fact, as it says in Hebrews 13, 5, that He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's with you. And that is a huge weapon of defense as we face 2024, as we look ahead to uh, the school year, as we look ahead to sports or drama or plays or things that we're going to be involved in, we can take confidence in knowing that Jesus is going before us. So, there's one verse that I want to look at today, just one verse, and um, our time is is not going to be long this morning, but within this verse, it says absolutely everything that we need to know about pleasing God. Who wants to please God? Just curious. Just curious if that's interesting to you, to please Him. Okay, that's awesome. Um, And it's very simple. See, sometimes I think we overcomplicate the Christian life, don't we? Sometimes we get all in our heads and we get worried about so many things, and Jesus says, oh my gosh, settle down. (laughs) You really only have a couple things to think about, okay? So take a look at this verse. It's Hebrews 4. Uh, or I'm sorry, Hebrews 11.6, and it says, with, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how do we please God? By faith. faith. Okay, good. But he's going to spell it out a bit more, the author here. He says, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Two things this tells us to please God. What's the first one? Faith. Okay, right after that it says, because what? We must believe, believe in Him. Believe what? That He exists, okay? So number one, and actually I would say this is the easy part. Number one is simply believe that He exists. In another part in Scripture, um, it says that uh, even demons believe in Jesus. They don't, they don't have faith in Him, obviously, to save them because they're opposed to Him. But even, even demons, even spiritual forces uh, outside of, of God know that He is the one true God. You look around at creation, you look at, around at your hand and your body and the intricacy of human life, and you realize that there is a Creator God, right? And so believing that He exists is maybe the easy part, but what is the second way that we please Him? What does it say? Go ahead. By seeking Him, and what else does it say? So, believe that He exists and that He rewards. Okay, ding, ding, ding. Rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Guys, what I want to challenge you with in 2024 is to earnestly go after God. Now, what does it mean to earnestly do anything? It's not a word we say very often. You in the back right there. (laughs) Doing it for a reason. Doing it because you want to. Doing it on purpose, right? Like going after Jesus on purpose with intentionality. If I'm going to run a race, do you guys have a track here? Do you have a track? Do you run around the track? Not really. Something. A field, right? So if we were all going to go out and have a race around the field, we would run around the race. Now, if if I didn't run with purpose and I just started running off and I jumped the fence and ran down the street somewhere else, am I still in the race? Not at all, right? I've completely gone on a detour. And with 2024 before us, what this scripture is encouraging us in is to realize that when I'm running that race, I have to recognize that God God, the the author of life. He's the one who owns everything. It says in Psalm 24 that um, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That means everything belongs to God. Does God have the resources that you need in 2024? Does He have good things in store for you? 100%. Are you going to trust Him? Are you going to seek Him? Are you going to run around in that race on purpose or are you just going to kind of drift? Any uh, surfers in, in the group among us? Okay. What happens when you paddle out in the water and you go out and you finally you, you swim past the breakers and you get out there and, you know, you're winded because it's taken some, some effort and some energy. And then you sit on your board. And what happens if you just sit on your board and you talk with your friends for a while? What happens naturally 
Do you begin, what, what, what kind of happens? Anyone? What do you think? What do you think? The tide brings you in. Well, if you're past the breakers, it doesn't necessarily bring you in. You start drifting. Everybody say, ding, 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 ding. There it is. You start drifting. You start drifting. And the same is true in our spiritual lives, right? We think somehow, okay, if I just come to school every day and I attend chapel and do the thing, then everything will be okay. And it's a, it's a good start. But if we are not purposeful with the way that we're walking, if we don't look at our year and our calendar and our priorities and our friendships and the ways that we spend our time and how we think about loving others and being good listeners and, and going all in for Jesus, if we don't do those things on purpose, then we're just bound to drift, right? All of a sudden, we'll, we'll stop and be like, whoa, we parked way over there and now we're way over here. Now I have to swim all the way back. And so what I want to do um, is just take a couple of, of, uh, of realities that we can look at when, to answer this question. How can I earnestly seek Him in 2024? Three quick encouragements, okay, you guys? Number one, give God your best. Let Him take care of the rest. Give God your best. What is your best? It's your best energy. It's your best um, focus, it's the priority of your heart. See, it's, it's really just about doing your best for him and then not worrying about the rest of everything else. We get so caught up in worry, can't we? When God just simply says, do your best. Going back to the racing analogy, 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, do you know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize? Notice this. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Again, going back to it, run on purpose in 2024. Second thing I want to encourage you with is throw off bad habits and sin. If we go out uh, and, and run around the field and someone puts a 200-pound backpack on my back, am I going to be as fast as you guys? Not even close, right? And what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 is that it's so easy to fall into sin. It's so easily to get, easy to get caught up and entangled in things that slow down our walk, right? Look at what it says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, and in chapter 11, they talk about Abraham, and they talk about all these Old Testament figures who trusted in God, and it's, he pictures them as like in heaven rooting us on, looking down, going like, keep going, keep going, don't give up the fight, keep trusting in Jesus, and that sort of thing. So he says, since we're surrounded by all of these witnesses to the life of faith, he says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Have you guys ever seen dogs race around a track, like in cartoons or whatever? Um, oftentimes, they'll put a piece of meat out in front of that dog, which is, you know, it's kind of silly because the dog, like, knows it's not going to get the meat. It's just going to keep running around the track trying to get it. But they do it to, to motivate the dog, right? And it's kind of a weird analogy, but basically what Scripture says is put Jesus before you and always keep him before you. And then you will run in ways that will bring a blessing into your life. See, that's the most encouraging part of all this, is God actually wants to bless you guys. He wants to bless you in deep and profound ways. He wants to bless you in ways that you don't even know how to think or thank Him for. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it, it talks about in Ephesians 3.20 that, um, that, that God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or think or imagine. I can imagine all kinds of good things. Can you? God says He's able to give you even more, but it's all connected to staying, uh, staying close to Him. So throw off the bad habits of sin. Everybody just pretend like they're throwing off right now. Just get that. Don't hit your neighbor, but get that thing out of here. And so maybe you guys, hands down, hands down, bodies quiet. I know, I invited that. But, yeah, right, calm, there it is. Um, but, but that's the kind of mentality we have to have, Right? 
Are there bad habits that have crept in? Have you been telling not the whole truth? Have you been being mean? Have you been being insecure and spreading gossip? Have you been overly worried and anxious about things that you really don't need to be worried or anxious about? Surrender those things to Jesus. That's what I love about worship. That's what I love that you guys get to come to school every day with teachers who love Jesus who can point you in the direction of giving your burdens to Him, right? And as we do that, God promises to give us amazing rewards. Last point here, um, and this is what I want to leave you with, is take a leap of faith and believe He will reward your faith. Going back to the title of our message, Trusting God more in 2024. Here's how we're going to end. We're all going to say, trust God more in 2024. And we're going to repeat it a few times, okay? So trust God more in 2024. One, two, three. One more time. Just kidding, last time. So now when your parents say, what was chapel about? What are you going to say? It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, but will we do it, right? Will we actually trust him? So let's trust him. Let's believe that he has amazing stuff in store. Will you pray for me? Pray with me. I mean, you can pray for me too. That'd be great. Father God, thank you so much. Uh, I love these students. I love who they are becoming in you. Um, Right now, they are boys and girls, but they are going to be men and women. And I just love the fact that you have them in this place to trust you more as they look to 2024. I pray that they would give you everything. They would throw off the sin that so easily entangles. They would run with perseverance the race that you have marked out for them. We love you. We live for your glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK through 12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.